Welcome to Clear Skies Astro. I'm Gustavo Maestre and today we're going to be reviewing basic astrophotography equipment. We're going to do this as a series and show you the differences in different rigs and complexity to meet your needs for your astrophotography. But in this video, we're going to be reviewing a basic DSLR with a high power lens and tripod. And we'll be going ahead and reviewing that step by step and piece by piece through the equipment. Looking forward to doing it with you. Let's go. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this astrophotography gear. I'm going to cover every single piece and component, let you know what are the must haves and what are the nice to have. So to start off with the star of the show, it's going to end out with the camera. In this case, it's a Canon 7D Mark II camera. I purchased this off of eBay. If you have any kind of DSLR at home, it would likely work just fine. You'd probably be surprised with the results when you actually use it for astrophotography. Next, we have a telephoto lens. This one here is the EF 200 millimeter uh, Canon lens, one of the gold standard lenses. If you're able to get one of these, excellent. If you have other lenses at home, which I'll cover, they'll likely work just fine. This one only has a focus ring, which is nice because when you're managing the lens, you don't have to worry about knocking your focus out. And then lastly, because of where you may be shooting like myself, I'm shooting from Bortle Class 7 Skies, I need an actual hood on my camera lens. And so here's the hood piece. Next we have the tripod. This one is a Mi Photo Road Trip S uh, tripod. Excellent base, fairly sturdy, lightweight. You can move it around for good portability. Uh, when you use this tripod, you definitely don't want to extend the neck. So you want to stay down towards the base, but this is a good tripod here. And then I also have a ball head uh, mount here. This one is a newer purchased through Amazon. Two locking lugs here for the ball itself to keep it sturdy in place. Um, but this is the mount that goes with pretty much any DSLR. Next on to these other pieces. So these are different lenses and you may have several lenses at home and they have different functions and different objects that they're stronger at depending on what kind of lens you have. So in this case right here it's a 10 to 22 millimeter kind of a wider lens, something you would probably shoot like a wedding or something like that with. But in this case, you can use this lens for things like star trails or uh, pictures that are gonna have wide landscape or maybe Milky Way pictures. So this is a good lens to use for something like that. And then another lens I have, this one's actually a zoom lens. So with a zoom lens, you get the added focal length um, within a very compact size. These can be a little bit tricky though, because as you start to sight in your, uh, your focus and get everything set, you can easily bump these and knock the focus out. Um, but tidbit of, of advice there, you can also put a little piece of scotch tape on there and it holds the lens just fine. So a lens and a camera are definitely gonna be your must haves. Next up is the lens warmer. So in this case, you wrap it around your lens to a low power like battery pack and it'll go ahead and keep your lens warm and keep it from fogging. And I can tell you, I did make the rookie mistake myself of not purchasing one of these. And then when I went to shoot, I had plenty of time. I was excited to look at my pictures and they were fogged. So go ahead and buy one of these, very inexpensive, and they come in handy anytime that you shoot uh, with any telescope, with any lens. To go with this lens warmer, I use a battery pack. You can purchase these at any retailer really and you just plug this one in USB into my lens warmer, keeps the warmer going, uh, but you'll definitely want a battery pack. Then you have your intervalometer. So what an intervalometer is, is it tells the camera how many pictures you wanna take, what duration you want the pictures, and uh, the separation between the pictures themselves. So the intervalometer is much more handy than having to click each picture individually, which could go on forever because you're gonna be stacking a lot of pictures to put these together. Uh, so I'd highly recommend getting an intervalometer. And then you'll also need to get yourself a memory card. Uh, this one's 128 gigabytes, but really uh, I'd say that anything over 64 gigs is gonna be plenty in size for your pictures. And then depending on the computer you have, a card reader. So my laptop doesn't have a card slot anymore, so I use a USB adapter for it. So this equipment over here, I would put into the must-have section. So you must have a camera. 
you must have a lens, you must have a hood. Uh, then I would say the intervalometer is a must have pretty much because like I said, you're gonna take a lot of pictures themselves. And then your card, card reader if necessary, and your battery pack tripod and uh, ball head. So these are all must haves. Some of the items that you would likely want to have is a Botanov mask. So this goes over the front of the camera lens here. And then when you go to focus, you can get pinpoint stars. You can do it without a Botanov mask. Uh, this is definitely very, very fine tuned. But if you don't have one, you can still use the zoom feature when you're looking at a live view in your DSLR, zoom in way close, and then you can lightly turn your focus uh, to make sure that you have pinpoint stars. But the Botanov mask, definitely makes it easier and it's pretty much fail proof. Another nice to have is a filter. So in this case, I have an Optolong L Enhance clip-in filter. Uh, depending on your camera, you may or may not have this as an option. Uh, so you'll have to research your camera and lens that you're using to see what kind of filters work best. But in this case, it's a clip-in filter, very easy to use. I'll show you just briefly how this goes in. So you just take your camera, remove the lens, and then the clip-in filter literally just gets dropped in. Looks like so. And then you just go ahead and snap your lens back on. Now that Optolong L Enhance filter is excellent for emission nebula. It's a dual band filter, so you can pull out your H alpha and oxygen three That'll give you your blues, your reds in a lot of your pictures that you're gonna be taking. Um, not as effective for things like galaxies. On that, you'd want a broadband filter where basically it takes in all of the bands of light while blocking out city lights uh, and moonlight as well. But for most deep space objects, the Optolong L Enhance is a good you know, Swiss Army knife if you wanted to get one filter. Thank you for joining me as we reviewed a basic astrophotography rig I wish you all the best in your pictures. If you found this information helpful or useful, please leave comments. I'd be happy to read them and answer as many as I can. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I wish you clear skies and let's get those cameras pointed up.